Good evening, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came into a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is, Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, theirs the adoption, the glory, covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. Theirs the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, 
God bless it forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God be with you. Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he fed the people, Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed by the waves, for the wind was against it. And during the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, and they cried out in fear, It is a ghost. Jesus spoke to them at once and said, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter said in reply, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come toward you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and began going toward Jesus on the water. But when he saw how strong the wind was, and becoming frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And after they got into the boat, the wind died down. And the disciples in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly this is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Twice during the past week, I had the opportunity to read and reflect upon this gospel that we just heard with two groups. One was the pastoral staff of Our Lady of the Lake, and the other was the pastoral staff of St. Jerome. And in both conversations and reflections, there were a couple of things that were uh, really kind of consistent among almost everybody. One was this. People said, I resonate with the experience of turbulence, the idea of being tossed and being buffeted by the wind. That kind of describes how I feel in our place and time right now, given the conditions of the pandemic, the wider social conditions, decisions that parents are facing about whether to send their kids to school and how to do so, and everybody connected with those things, whether people should play sports, This is turbulent. And so I resonate, they said, with the experience of turbulence that the disciples were experiencing. The second thing was this. They said, we like the words, take courage. Take courage. We need to hear that. And as I thought about both of those conversations, I'm guessing that these two staffs were kind of a focus group for where many, many people in our society and maybe many of us in this church are right now, resonating with the experience of turbulence and the need to hear someone say, take courage. So I found myself saying, this weekend, I have to find a way to say something that will be hopeful and encouraging to people. And fortunately, Both this gospel story and the first reading give us a point of entry to do that. And we can summarize what is hopeful and encouraging this way. We can say, God comes to us. And we can find God where God finds us. So if we look at the gospel story, 
Uh, one of the most important elements of this is that when the disciples are offshore, Jesus comes toward them. Jesus comes toward them. Walking on the sea, but Jesus comes toward them. And the disciples' reaction is inst uh, instructive for us, and I think Peter is typical here. First, there's a little bit of fear and uncertainty. Then there is a decision to believe that this is, in fact, the Lord who is coming towards us. And coming to that decision, then there follows an experience of grace and awe. So this is a dramatic story of God coming towards the disciples. In the first reading, God also comes towards Elijah, but not in strong wind, not in an earthquake, not in fire, but in a tiny whispering sound. And I can imagine that as Elijah was outside of that cave in the middle of this strong wind and earthquake and fire, there would have been no little bit of fear and uncertainty in him. And yet, once the tiny whispering sound is heard, he comes to the conclusion that this is indeed the Lord and covers himself in a gesture that is in awe of the God who is passing by in this tiny whispering sound. God came toward Elijah. And God comes to us. So what I would like to do, hopefully so that you may be resonant with these stories, so that you may find some encouragement and hope, and so that you may be able to uh, recognize when God is coming toward you, I'd like to share four short stories. These are true stories. I've, they happened to me within the last month or so, and I think it points out how God comes toward us. God comes to us. Number one, and these all happened within the last month. Two or three weeks ago, I was driving along 200th Street in the morning, and I noticed a couple walking down the street. I didn't recognize them. I didn't know who they were. I'm guessing they were probably in their mid-40s, maybe give or take a few years. And each of them was carrying a plastic bag. And as they walked, they stopped and picked up trash along the street. And I thought to myself, well, there's something you don't see every day. And I was impressed by that action. But over the next few weeks, I saw them several more times doing the very same thing. And I began to get a deeper awareness of what was happening, I think. This couple has a sense of a mission that they can do something to help keep their neighborhood clean. And as I drew more deeply into the experience, I began to hear inside of me a question, what can I do? And I began to remember what Pope Francis said about our uh, duty to care for our common home. And I realized that uh, after a bit of uncertainty about what this was all about, that in this experience, God was coming to me. In this simple, everyday experience, God was coming to me, and I experienced this witness of this couple as a moment of grace and one that led to prayer. God comes to us. The second example and I want to do a disclaimer. This is not a story about me, but it's a story about God. But the second example has to do with an email that was forwarded to me. It concerned the video that I made on July 18th. And the video said, that, and the email said this. Your sermons and reflections on the gospel really speak to me, Father Joe. Thank you for giving of your knowledge and your time. I am so glad you use the YouTube platform so I can receive your words in Cincinnati. When I read that email, my response was, awe. Oh, holy cow. In, it seems that what I have been doing, at least occasionally, strikes this woman as an episode of God coming toward her, of stirring up faith in her, of perhaps... Uh, giving her a sense of, of peace in her time of turbulence. But it's not just a story of God coming toward her, it's a story of God coming toward me, because I recognized in this response uh, that I was being lifted up, 
that I was being encouraged to keep on doing what I have been doing to not lose heart that God was coming to me. Story number two. Number three has to do with the parade that our, some of our parishioners participated in last Sunday. Uh, a little before one o'clock, about 10, 11 cars assembled in the parking lot, decorated with signs. Somebody had a megaphone that could tell people, we miss you, we love you. And for about an hour and 20 minutes, we drove very slowly through the territory, about a third of the parish. I have to confess that as I was thinking about this, uh, there was no little bit of uncertainty in me about how this is going to work. And I also have to confess that this wasn't necessarily the first thing that I would have done that Sunday afternoon. And yet, the reactions of the people involved were instructive. As we were driving slowly through the neighborhood, there were a number of people who were clearly not parishioners who were kind of intrigued and curious. And when they saw the cars and the signs and they heard the horns and everything else, invariably they smiled and waved. And perhaps they would not have used this language, but I think this was a little way in which God was coming to them. Huh? And perhaps seeing the signs on the cars might have led them in the direction of thinking, well, maybe there's something bigger than me that I'm being a part of here. There were also a number of times throughout the course of the parade when parishioners who were anticipating us were out on their front lawn. Some of them had signs. Everybody was waving and everybody was smiling. Everybody. And then those who were in the cars in the parade had a pretty common experience, and I'll just share my own. I noticed that despite my hesitancy, by the time I was halfway through this parade, I was smiling. I was saying, wow, I'm caught up in something bigger than I am right now, and I think that all parties concerned were as well. God was coming to us. God comes to us. The last short story has to do with our microloan program. As you know, we've had a program for a few years of making small, low-interest loans to people who are starting up businesses or trying to maintain a business. And within the last month, got a call from a man from Hudson, Ohio, whom we don't know. Okay. He, he knew about the Grameen Bank, which was the inspiration for our microloan program and he wanted to get something started. He called one of the local parishes and they thought it was too ambitious for the small parish that they were, but they referred him to us. So he contacted by email and a few days later, we received from him a check in the mail for $1,000 to be given in the service of the microloan program. And again, I found myself in awe saying, this little bit that we're doing, in many ways under the radar screen, has a reach that is able to be for this man, God coming toward him. And once again, his response to us was an instance of God coming toward us. So even though uh, God comes to the disciples it, during their turbulence as Jesus walks through them, toward them, and even though God comes to Elijah in the tiny whispering sound, I think the point is that God comes to us, often in the most ordinary of circumstances, and often in ways that are surprising. Indeed, I would suggest that surprise is part of the grace of the experience. The surprise gets our attention. And even if we might be uncertain and have to summon up the courage to believe this is indeed God coming toward us, we can be led to a moment of grace and awe. So in a time of turbulence, please let the Spirit of God move among us so that we might be able to more clearly recognize and respond to the God who comes to us often in unexpected, surprising ways.
Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us offer our prayers. For Pope Francis, as he selects the next shepherd of the Youngstown Diocese, and for Bishop-elect Edward Malesic, that the Holy Spirit will enlighten all the leaders of our church in faith and the promises in Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations, battered by the storms of war and ethnic hatred, they come one day to rejoice in peace and reconciliation. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of clergy sexual abuse, that they may find the loving, healing hand of God. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That people of goodwill may respond to the Lord's presence and come to the generous relief of victims of earthquake, fire, and other disasters. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who doubt the reality of Christ's presence in their lives may find in us the support they need to take heart and not be afraid. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we, disciples of little faith, may respond with exuberance as Christ draws us near and comes to us. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Our Lady of the Lake and St. Jerome parishes, as we support each other in unity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may reach out and take the hand of those who have died in faith and lead them safely across to the haven of eternal life, especially for Alan Kozlowski. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, hear our prayers. Come toward us with your love and your grace, and please give us what we most need. We pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen.
Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to our ever-living God. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church. For in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the hosts of angels adores you and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim, proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your resurrection Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all who serve you. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, and the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now with confidence, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And now respecting both social distancing and your relationships, offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Just a reminder about our communion procedures. We ask everyone to receive communion in the hand to maintain social distancing as you approach the and leave the Eucharistic ministers. When you're in front of the Eucharistic ministers, please keep your mask on until after you have said amen. Then step to the right or to the left and consume the host and return to your place. Thank you.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. As we conclude, I just want to say thanks again for your cooperation in these new procedures in these turbulent times. To remind you that all the doors on the east side of the church will be open for exiting. And to let you know that uh, there are two more parades that are scheduled so that we can get to the entire parish territory. Parade number two will take place next Sunday, not tomorrow, but next Sunday. There'll be more details, but the idea is that we're going to be hitting the western and southwestern portion of the parish uh, in that parade. So if you live there, you might want to come out and wave, or if you want to be in the parade, let Melissa know, and because uh, she's the brains behind this, and uh, who knows, maybe God will come to us again. Um, I think that's it. May God be with you. And may Almighty God bless all of us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mass is ended now. Go in peace to love and to serve our God.